Hey everybody, I thought I would uh, say hello first in person. Uh, so my name is Dave Fisher. Uh, this camp material is for Python. Um, and I thought I'd give a little background where you can see my face and things. I'll probably uh, make my face disappear uh, from a little bit uh, to let you know what these uh, what these videos are all about. Uh, so first off, what is this? Uh, what is this camp? What are the goals uh, of this program? Uh, I'll just go ahead and get out of the slides here and just kind of show you some things. So connecting with code. So this is a uh, summer programming camp uh, where we make videos. Uh, we've been doing it for about six or seven years now uh, at Rolls Holman. Um, and then switching in uh, the COVID years, uh, we became an online camp, uh, which was kind of fun. Uh, and we started making these videos. Um, and since COVID, we've actually gone back to face-to-face uh, -to -face camps as well. Uh, but what we're doing here is we're offering you two different uh, levels of the camp. Um, the nice thing about this uh, archive is since we went online, uh, you can actually see what we've done in each year. Um, and what we've been doing these days is we've been having uh, a camp for uh, Scratch, uh, which is a great way to get introduced to coding. It's what we recommend you do uh, to get started. Uh, and then we've also started uh, a more advanced camp for Python. Uh, and we did this last year, and we thought we'd do it again this year. Uh, and that's what this video is all about, is getting started with Python. Uh, who is this camp for? Uh, really, it's for people that uh, are comfortable typing, uh, for one. So usually that's around, I don't know, the fourth grade, depends on when you when you start to learn how to type. Um, you can hunt and peck and survive with uh, text-based coding, but it is painful. Uh, so you really uh, hopefully will have, have some typing ability, maybe not perfect, but something. Um, and for people that are comfortable with uh, the basics of coding, uh, kind of from maybe a scratch background uh, or other things. And so that's our target audience. Now, if you miss one of those two criteria, maybe you can't type or the darn, um, you know, you can struggle and you can you can keep up, right? Just kind of know that we're, we're expecting you can type already. Um, or maybe you don't have uh, a programming background uh, or programming experience with Scratch or something like that. Uh, that's okay too. Uh, you'll, you'll be able to swim as well. Um, by the way, if you ever did want, uh, we film videos uh, for uh, the Scratch version as well. Um, and if you wanted to, uh, the things that we're doing today, uh, we're building this like build a house uh, thing in uh, Python today, uh, but we do the same videos in Scratch as well. And if, if you really kind of want the fundamentals of coding, Scratch is, uh, is an easier place to get started. Uh, but we are going to uh, dive into Python today. Uh, one of the things that makes Python more challenging than Scratch is setting up your computer to do it. Uh, so there's a couple different ways uh, that you can set up your computer to do it. Uh, the one that we're recommending to you in these videos is to use a web uh, IDE for Python called Replit. Uh, and so if you go to REPL.IT, um, that actually just redirects uh, to Replit.com. Um, and what you can do on Replit.com is you can uh, make an account. Uh, so you can see I'm already signed in uh, as somebody. So make an account. You can follow their steps to make an account. And then you can create uh, REPLs. And so that's what I'll uh, do here. So go ahead and pause the video, make an account for yourself on Replit.com, and click on the big button that says Create uh, REPL. Now what you can do in REPL is you can uh, write code in Java. You can write code in JavaScript. Um, you can write code in Python. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, things that you can do. What we want to do is we um, want to type in, when you create a REPL, we want to create um, a Python program using their Pygame template. Now, that's confusing. Uh, I, I was totally expecting to type in the word Python, right? So I was totally expecting to type in Python. The problem with their, their Python environment is it doesn't have a place for graphics to display. And uh, all the things that we're going to be doing with you are going to be displaying uh, graphics. And so we want to choose this Pygame template. And so it'll say Pygame or whatever. And this, uh, this thing that we're ultimately building is called uh, Build a House. Um, and so this is one way uh, that you can get started with uh, Python uh, with kind of the least amount of computer setup. Because you just went to some website, uh, you created an account there, um, and then uh, you uh, said, you know, make a, a Pygame uh, REPL. 
Now what it did for me is it actually added some some code uh, which is specific to Pi game. I actually don't uh, care about that code. Uh, I just wanted uh, to make sure that I had a visual place to see my code. Uh, and all I want to do uh, right now is I just want to say print hello world uh, and then run it. Uh, and what that'll do is that will hopefully uh, print it to the console here and say uh, hello world. And then what we're going to be working with is we're going to be working with uh, different graphics APIs. Um, the one that this template was made for is Pi Game. Uh, the one we're going to use most in this uh, series uh, is called Replit Play. Uh, but the one we're going to use today is actually called Rose Graphics. So we're going to be doing uh, some things with graphics. By the way, I don't really know what this uh, message thing is over here. I guess I'll just close that and get rid of it. Um, but you can see that um, we've got kind of our output over here. So this is the way I recommend uh, you get started today. The other thing that you could do if you wanted uh, is to download a program called PyCharm. So PyCharm is um, a program uh, that you can install on your computer um, and then you can run Python programs from within uh, PyCharm, uh, which is better um, in that your stuff will run faster, um, but it also just takes a little bit more setup. Now you can see that there's a professional version, the community version. The community version will work just fine, so you just click on download the community version. If you do go that route, uh, I'll just kind of show you what it looks like here. Uh, let's see here. This is, uh, this is my PyCharm on my computer. Um, it kind of sort of looks like this, and you'll have to, um, you know, get used to the, the environment uh, of what it looks like to create files in here. Uh, I'll just kind of close everything down. Uh, but the nice thing is, is that if you do this route and you get it all set up, it does run much faster. Uh, because it's running just on uh, your own computer. I uh, what the heck, I'll show you the uh, the solution that we're, we're building today. So I'm going to uh, run this. And so what we're building is this um, build a house program. Uh, and so what it does is you select an option. So you type in like the number one and it draws uh, some part of the house. Two, uh, oops, three, got kind of goofed up there. So it's a command line uh, where you're typing in what you want to do. And then the graphics window kind of shows up over here. So you can see how it's got these two things of kind of like the, uh, the command line uh, and then the graphics window. By the way, you can also change colors. Uh, and that's uh, the project that we built in Scratch uh, for the Scratch Camp. And then we're going to show you how could you do the same things uh, in Python. Now that was showing the solution with uh, PyCharm, if you wanted to do that. Uh, again, to run it, if you do this, you just right-click in the window and you say run. That's how you run things uh, in PyCharm if you go that route. Um, now that is not what we're doing uh, as the recommendation. Uh, we're using Replit. And just to kind of show you, here's a, a solution. One of these tabs is a solution. Uh, this is what the same thing will look like in Replit. Uh, so it's got this select an option down here, and so I'll hit one. Uh, but you can see that it uh, effectively is the same program. It's just running in a web IDE. Now, whenever performance isn't an issue, uh, the web IDE works just fine. It's only if your programs get like really intense uh, that you uh, might want to switch to that PyCharm version. All right, so that's what we're up to today. It's a very, very long project, hundreds of lines of code, right? Um, so do expect to watch this video uh, in chunks. Um, but that is, uh, is the goal. So I think what I'll do uh, in moving forward from here is I think that I'm going to uh, hide my face because uh, you don't really need my face from this point forward. Uh, what you will need is you will need uh, all of my screen. So I'm going to pause it and come back uh, without my head. All right, I'm back, but without my head on the screen. I thought of a few things I should have said before uh, getting started here. Uh, the first is uh, I thought I'd do this project with Bob Schaefer uh, at Mission College in Santa Clara. We prepare the uh, the content together. I'm just the one filming the videos for Python here. Uh, and we always have a theme uh, each year. This theme uh, for this summer is sustainability, so they're all kind of sustainability theme. A little loosely themed, uh, I'll be I'll be honest. Uh, and we use the same projects in Scratch uh, and in Python. Uh, the four projects we're doing this year are build a house recycling, save the fish, and butterfly growth population. Normally, every summer we do five, but this year we're doing four. It's like, oh, you're doing less. It's like, well, they're all huge, right? Um, so we are doing 
fewer projects, but actually it's quite a bit more uh, content that we're doing. Uh, the other reason that I wanted to come into the slides is because there is a uh, file that you're going to need. Uh, and I'll make sure this file is available in the YouTube description uh, below, uh, or these slides will have it. Uh, and the file that you're going to need is this rosegraphics.py uh, file. Now, uh, what I'm wanting to do here is I'm wanting to have you um, copy the text uh, of this file into your project. Uh, so you've probably got a, uh, a REPL open, uh, which somehow I closed. I'm not sure why I closed it. Uh, the solution is not the one I want. Uh, let's find this tab. All right, here's the one that we did last time. All right, so uh, before what we did is we made Hello World, which is all well and good. Uh, it made this file over here. That was great. Uh, you can see that this was written in a file called main.py, uh, and this lets you type Python code, uh, and then it lets you uh, run it when you're ready. Right? So if I change it to Hello World with exclamations, you can see it uh, runs Hello World. And it's, to be honest, just a little slow. Uh, this is because it's using this web IDE. If you were to install PyCharm, it would be you know, instantaneous. So here's what we want to do. We want to make a new file. Uh, and this new file is going to be called rosegraphics.py. Now, where I clicked is I clicked on this little new file icon, and I made it. Uh, if you're using... Um, you know, PyCharm, you would create a file uh, in a different way. It uh, looks like it put it over into this area. I think I'm just going to move it over into this area. Uh, so you've got two tabs here. And what I want to put into this Rose Graphics is I don't want to type any code. I want to actually copy all this code. Now, there's two ways you can copy it. Either you can copy it from the screen in here, that's fine. Or I actually like to just click on this button that says Raw. Um, and I like to do that because then uh, I can hit Control-A to select everything and Control-C. And then I'll come into uh, my file here and I'll just paste the text. So uh, we did not want to make you write this file because you can see it's 2,000 lines of code. It's actually quite a bit uh, of code in here. Now we're going to use this library. Uh, it's a simple graphics library for Python. We're going to use it today. But to be honest, you don't even need to have it open. Uh, so you can just close it and that's fine. Uh, and we're going to show you how to, to use this file uh, to help you do things with Python a little bit easier. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, get rid of Hello World. Uh, you can delete it or you can comment it out. One shortcut key for commenting out is control forward slash. Uh, or you can see that what it typed is just a, a little pound symbol uh, and then a space. So what we want to do is we want to use this library. And this library is called Rose Graphics. And you can see how my IDE helps me uh, to type things. Now, whenever you use somebody else's graphics library, uh, you can type rows of graphics like anytime you want to use it. Or there's this cool trick. You can say as RG. And then what that'll let you do is that will let you um, write the code shorter. Uh, let's, let's, let's just go ahead and do an example here. So the thing that we're going to be doing a lot with this library is we're going to be making uh, turtles. Uh, and so we're going to be making simple turtles. So there's a lot of new stuff uh, that's, that's going on here. Uh, but what we're doing is we're creating an object, which is called a turtle. Um, and what we're hoping to do with this turtle is we're hoping to use it to do some drawing task. Now, turtle is a type of object. So just like um, you could have a number be seven, and then you could like do things with this number, you could add to it and things like that. Turtles uh, are more impressive uh, types of objects. They can do lots of things. Numbers can only do so much. You could also have uh, a thing called a string. And you can add these, you can multiply them, you could print them, you can do things like that. Uh, but turtles can do things like drawing on the screen and making pins and shapes. Uh, and there's actually quite a bit of fun stuff uh, that you can do with the turtle. In fact, let's just do something basic with a turtle. Uh, let's tell the turtle uh, to move forward. Uh, you can see if I wait long enough, it will uh, give me a minute there. Uh, you can make it go forwards uh, 100 pixels. Um, and so it'd be nice to be able to see this uh, like on a screen. Now you can try to run it, but our code's not very complete yet. So uh, it will run it. Um, it'll just close pretty quickly thereafter. 
Oh, I guess with, with REPL, it, the window stays up, so you can actually still see it. So you can see that I've got a turtle, uh, and I told him to move 100. Uh, and actually, I, I didn't expect it to work this well. It actually did stay on the screen for me, which was kind of nice. Now, if I were to change that 100 to 200 uh, and run it again, uh, you should hopefully see that the turtle this time uh, went a little farther, so he went 200. With objects, there's all kinds of things you can set on them as well. Uh, here you can see that our turtle is an arrow. That's actually not a very good turtle. Uh, so what I'm going to do is this library has the ability to uh, put in certain names. There's only so many. It's like turtle and arrow and things like that. Um, but if I say um, make this simple turtle look like a turtle, uh, you can see that it actually draws it uh, and looks like a turtle. You could also do things uh, with a turtle, like you could set his pin color. Uh, and so if I wanted to, I could set his pen to be a pen which is blue. Now, I typed that really fast. I expect you to probably have to pause the video uh, to do it. I'm going to get some of this other stuff out of here. Um, and the idea is, is that a turtle is a type of object uh, which can do fun stuff. Uh, one of the things that this turtle can do is he can uh, set his color. Oops, I need to set a thickness of him as well. I put in blue, but I should have also put in a thickness. I'll put in five pixels thick. Run it again. You can see I got an error down here, which is how I knew that that happened. Um, and so turtles are fun objects to work with in Python. Uh, you can use them to draw on the screen, and you can use them to do graphics. So you can see how it's kind of more fun to use libraries like Rose Graphics um, to actually do these things. So that's what we're going to be playing with. Now this was all just practice, uh, so I'm going to comment this out. The way we're going to actually start our program is by making a function called main. And what I like to do as the first thing in main is I like to say something. So I'll say build a house. Functions are something uh, that every programming language has, including Scratch. Uh, and the idea of functions is that it's a block of code, like you can put your code into like this chunk, and then you can call and run that chunk of code whenever you want. We're going to use functions quite a bit today, uh, so we may as well go ahead and get used to typing this word def uh, and then this word main. Now the funny thing about functions is they're blocks of code uh, but they only do something if you run them, right? Um, and so this uh, def main, so this is actually uh, declare a function. And then this down here is this is calling um, a function uh, so that it runs. And so now if we were to run this, it would actually do less than it did before. It would actually just say build a house and have no, no graphics things happen at all. Uh, so we want to combine these things a little bit. So let's go ahead and, uh, oh, and I, I should have mentioned this. Whenever I put a pound in front of something, it makes it a comment, which means that it does not run. It's still visually on the screen. You can still grab it later. So for example, uh, maybe I want these two lines inside my main function. Now one thing I could do is I could type them again uh, and that would be fine. There'd be nothing wrong with typing again. Or I can copy like part of the text uh, and paste it in. That'd be fine. Um, but it's sometimes uh, faster just to be able to have a comment uh, to where you can quickly grab it uh, and paste it and throw it in and things like that. I guess I could, there's no harm. I could actually grab this forward command uh, and just to show that it's doing new stuff I could change it to 20. So you can see that uh, computer um, typing programs like Python, there's more uh, there's more work, to be honest, than there was in Scratch. Scratch made these things easy, right? Uh, but in Python, they're a little bit harder, just to be perfectly blunt about it. Uh, but the number of things you can do in, in text-based languages is actually much greater. And so what we want to do today is we want to uh, make a menu. And so the idea of this menu is that it's going to be a loop that runs forever, and it's going to ask people uh, what tasks they want to do with the turtle. So we're going to make a loop that runs forever. 
In Scratch, uh, you see these as like a just a forever loop. And in Python, you have to type it a little bit different. And so you say the word while uh, true. Hopefully my font is big enough there uh, that everybody can see it, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to ask them to make a selection. So we're going to say um, select an option. Now I'm just going to tell you right now what the options are going to be. Uh, so you can select uh, number one, uh, which is going to be used to draw something. Uh, I think number one, we're actually going to make the uh, chimney. And then number two, uh, we're going to make be the, uh, the box of a house. And then number three, we're going to make the roof of a house. Uh, and so on. So I won't bother spell out the others. We'll, we'll get to them uh, kind of as we go, but that's kind of the idea. And so what we're going to do is we're going to ask people to make a selection, and then based on their answer, uh, we're going to do something different. Uh, just uh, as, a, as a quick test here, we're just going to print out a test and print out the selection. So now it's going to ask you to select an option, and then it's going to print it back out to you. So if I run this, so my turtle is still up there, but this down here is where I'm going to be typing things. So it says select an option. If I say number one, uh, that's going to print the chimney. Number two is going to print the box. Three uh, is going to be the roof. Now you can actually type in whatever you want here. It doesn't matter. Uh, and it'll just echo it right back. Now the problem that we have now is that we are running this program. Uh, and you can see we're still running it. Uh, but there's there's no way in the program to stop it. That's okay. You just hit the stop button up here, uh, and then it stops the program. So let's go ahead and uh, start to write a little bit of this code. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to use our turtle to actually do these things. And so what we want to say is we want to say if the selection is equal to uh, the number one, then what I want to do is I want to say to do build a house, build a chimney. And so now if I run it again, if I type number one, it'll say to do, build a chimney. If I hit any other key, uh, nothing at all happens, right? So we can see that it's actually looking at our selection uh, to see if it's the number one. Now you may have noticed that I used two equal signs here. That's because single equals is an operator which actually means assignment. So assign whatever's on the right hand side to the thing on the left. So it actually sets it, right? If we want to test for equality, we just want to ask, hey, are these things, are they equal, right? Like that's just a question. It's actually a double equals. And so what we're going to do is instead of printing uh, to do build the chimney, uh, we're going to actually make a bun bunch of functions. We're going to call a function which we have not written yet, draw chimney, and we're going to pass to it the turtle. Now just bear with me for a little bit here. We're going to we're going to explain what we're doing here. In the same way that we called main, which was a function, we're calling a function draw chimney. Draw chimney doesn't exist yet. You can see that the PyCharm is, uh, or sorry, Repli here is very mad at me, right? And so I'm going to need to make this function draw chimney. And he's going to receive the turtle. By the way, I could have named these different on the inside of the function, the outside, and that would have been fine. For for today, we're we're not gonna we're not gonna go into that. Um, we're just gonna give it the same name in both. So main is a function. He knows this object by the name turtle. Chimney is a separate function, which could know him by a different name, but he's gonna choose to also know him by the name turtle. We won't. Uh, we won't go into that too much in detail. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and write a little bit of code here. The first thing I want to do with the turtle is I want to lift up the pen and I want to go somewhere. Uh, so I'm going to go to a certain location um, and I've got these points all worked out. Uh, I'm going to go to a point 50, 90. And so if I were to run this program again, and I were to select option number one, the turtle should move. So see how he moved? 
You also notice that he did not draw a line as he moved. Before, when we were moving this 200, which I've now taken off, by the way, I kind of did that subtly, he drew a line when he did it. But this time I don't want him to draw a line because I actually want him to go there and I want him to be pointed to the right. Set heading is the command I want uh, to zero. And then I'll let him put the pen down. And then he's going to start drawing. And so from here, he'll probably do something like go forward. Uh, let's have him go forward to 10 to start with. And I uh, am fully aware that uh, a lot of this looks like gibberish to you, right? So like that, that, that is fully aware of that, right? Um, and the idea is, is you got to start somewhere. And so the way that we're starting is we're learning by doing. Um, and what we're doing is we're typing the commands uh, that you see me type. Um, and we'll explain them uh, as, as we go. Uh, but I want to see if it works or not first. So I'm going to type 1. And what should happen is it should go to that spot and then draw a little bitty line of 10. So if you look at the code, you can probably understand uh, how that all came together. It pulled the pen up, so it, it moved without drawing a line. It went to a certain point. Now this syntax is going to be hard for you. RG, that was our shortcut for Rose Graphics. RG dot point 50, 90, that's an XY location. And so this grid is broken up into X's and Y's. And so it went over 50 and up 90. And so that's why it started right there. It set the heading to zero. That was just to make sure he was pointing to the right. He was pointing to the right, but I like to be careful about things. And then he put the pen down and then he drew this line, which was 10 long. Now what we want to do from here to actually draw the rest of the chimney is we want to do a left turn. Um, and then we want to go forward uh, a distance of 30. So if I stop my program and I run it again, you can see that if I hit 1, uh, he's going to move to that spot and then draw this little L shape, which is going to make for a chimney. Kind of neat. Now right now he draws the chimney in blue because that's his default color, uh, but we could actually change the color to any color that we wanted. Uh, let's go ahead and add that next just because it'll be fun. So we'll say if the selection, so I'm back up inside this, this while loop again here. If the selection is equal to R, then what we want to do is we want to set the turtle pin uh, to a new pin color. So we want to do, oh, actually we can just do that easier. We can say turtle.color equals um, red. Now, I've uh, kind of glossed over a lot of things in, in PyChart or Python uh, just to, uh, to try to make this video not so long. Uh, but in the face to face version, we actually spend some time talking about these like spaces. You'll notice that all my code is indented like very specifically. Um, if you've tried to follow along with this, you've probably run into this problem, right? Indentations are part of the code in Python, so it must be indented a very exact amount. Um, your indents have to be either two spaces, this one's two, or they should be four spaces, and you should be consistent with whichever one you pick. You can see that in uh, this replet, they actually are doing two spaces, which is fine with me. Uh, let me go ahead and add a couple more colors before I run it here. Uh, let's go ahead and add blue, which I believe is the default. Oh, no, actually, it's as I type blue right there. Um, red and uh, green. Uh, you can see it knows some colors. It doesn't know all colors, but you could try one that you wanted. So if I hit R and then a 1, it should draw a red. If I hit G1, it should draw the same thing but in green. Um, and if I were to hit B1, of course it would be blue. Pretty neat. Um, and so we need more pieces of our house, uh, but we can definitely draw uh, a chimney. Um, and we can definitely change the color. So those things are great. Uh, let's go ahead and knock out some, uh, some other options here. So let's go ahead and say if the selection is equal to 2, 
what we do is we want to draw, um, and we can name it the function anything we want. We want to draw a house, and we'll pass you the turtle uh, so that he can do the drawing. You see our program is getting quite long already. Uh, I think it was like 100 plus lines of code in the end. Uh, we're, we're making good progress here. So if we want to draw the house uh, using the turtle, it's going to have some similarities to this other function. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this function and then uh, make sure I'm all the way to the left and then paste it on again. And I'm going to switch it uh, from drawing chimney to drawing a house. Now in order to draw a house, uh, I'm going to do some things that are similar and some things that are different. What I want to do is I still want to move somewhere without drawing lines, so I'm going to do a pen up. And the place where I'm going to move to is I'm going to move to negative 80, negative 160. In the Scratch version of this project, we spend some time explaining the grid system and we explain like letting people look at an image and figure out where these things are. We just have different skills here, right? So we're just kind of wanting to see, uh, see how things work. And so now if I were to run this program, if I press uh, number one, it would draw the chimney. And then if I press number two, it would go to a new spot, which you can see is down here, but then it would still draw a chimney, right? And so you can see that the way this is broken up is there's uh, what spot you want to start at, uh, which is this spot here this time, and then what you want to do. So to draw the house, uh, what I want to do is I want to kind of draw uh, a box. Now there's two ways that you could draw this box. Uh, this box is going to be uh, 200 long, so we could easily go 200, and then we could do uh, a left turn of a 90, um, and then you could repeat that one, two, three, three times, so there's four total. Um, and if you uh, wanted to draw your box that way, so I'm just going to do one for my chimney and then two for my house. Um, that is a successful way to, uh, to draw uh, this house. I just realized it's too big. It's not supposed to be 200. It's supposed to be uh, 160 is what I actually meant to do. Now this actually is a perfect, uh, perfect segue for, for what I, I want to do. In coding, whenever you write the same thing uh, four times, there's probably a better way to do it. Uh, and sure enough, there is. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of these bottom three. And what I want to do instead is I want to make a for loop that runs four times. The syntax for this in Python, it takes a little getting used to. Um, you say 4k in range 4. This variable k doesn't actually matter. I could have typed anything there. Um, I could have also put an underscore there, which shows, hey, I don't really care about that variable. Now what we've done here is we've made uh, some code that's going to have code inside of it. And maybe this is where you can see how the indents work, right? So whenever there's a colon and then the next line is indented, it's actually inside uh, that next chunk of code. And so what I need to do here is I need to space this over. And what I can do is I can either hit the tab key to move it over, or I could have typed two spaces. I'm also going to fix this 200. It should have actually only been uh, 160. So I'm going to stop it. And I'm going to say number one to draw the chimney, number two uh, to draw the house. And so you can see that there's the house. And I could also change the color, by the way. So if I hit R and two, uh, it would be a red box. And again, I'm sure you've noticed this, but the thing that makes Python harder uh, than uh, Scratch is all the little bitty mistakes uh, that can be made when you're typing code. And so some people are very good at looking at their code and my code and figuring out where it's different. But don't be surprised at all if you have uh, more challenges uh, in, in doing yours. The next feature that I feel like adding, so obviously we're going to add a roof here in just a minute. The next feature I feel like adding is I would actually like to be able to type zero um, or just leave it blank and have that finish or exit the program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that feature next just because I don't like having to click on the stop button. I wish there was a way to stop it uh, from right down here. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a feature. I'm going to say if the selection, you can see how we're just kind of building this up. If it's zero or if the selection is the empty string, then I want to do is I want to break out of my program. Now, there's a couple things that I introduced here that were new. Uh, one is the or statement, uh, which can be a handy thing to learn. So this is true, or this is true, then the code here is going to run. The other thing I added is this code, right? So this code break, this will exit you out of the while loop. And so if I'm in the middle of a program, I type one, I type uh, two to build the house, uh, then uh, what I can do is I can actually exit the program by typing a zero, or just typing nothing. So if I just hit enter, uh, see how it says stop up here right now? If I just hit enter, uh, it'll actually stop the program uh, from the command line. Cool, so let's go ahead and keep cruising with this guy. Uh, if you would ever like, by the way, our goal is to, uh, to build this house like this, um, and you can at any point uh, stop and try to do a task uh, all by yourself and just see how it goes. Um, and so if you wanted to stop and try to do the triangle, uh, that would be great. I will go ahead and do it with you, though, uh, just in case you are not quite at the point where you're ready to, to tackle things. Uh, but we're hopefully being able to see some patterns. So the patterns that we see is that every time we want to add something, we add a um, if the selection is equal to whatever our new thing is. So this is three. We call some function. We're going to draw a triangle, and we're going to pass the turtle to that function. We're going to say, hey, draw a triangle uh, using the turtle. We don't like to start from scratch because that's just kind of extra work. So I'm going to copy uh, the one from the house here. I'm going to grab the whole draw house. I'm going to paste it below, and I'm going to rename it draw, um, what did I call it, roof? I called it triangle. I think I'm going to call it roof. Just because it feels more like uh, it feels more like I'm building a house instead of just geometry, right? So I'm going to say draw roof. So the roof, uh, maybe you uh, could do the math and figure out what that spot it is, but I'm just going to tell it to you. Uh, that spot right there is negative 100 in the x, zero in the y, and you can see that a uh, roof is a triangle. Uh, so we're trying to build this triangle. So uh, where I had a three, or sorry, a four before, I'm going to have a three right now. And you can see that the, it's a polygon, just like a square. And so with a polygon, you have to decide how long to make it. Uh, I'm going to make my roof a little bigger. If you look at this, you can see the roof is a little bigger than the, uh, the box. And of course, instead of 90, it's going to be a different angle. Now I could do the math. I could figure out what the angle is. I'm sure a bunch of you are very sharp. You're just like, it's 120. I know it, I already typed it. Uh, that would be fine. But I wanted to pause for a minute and see how did we get this uh, 90. Well, what we really did is we took this four and we divided it by 360. So what we could have done before is we could have said 360 divided by four. And down here we can say 360, which is the number of degrees in a circle, uh, divided by three. And this is how they actually got 90. And if you happen to know that it was 120, that's how uh, it actually got 120. So I'm going to try it. So I can draw a chimney with the number one. I can draw a uh, house uh, with the number two. Or I can draw a roof with the number three. Pretty cool. Uh, and then I can exit the program just by hitting enter and it will exit the program. Now, other things that I could do, you'll notice that I've got the number four uh, used twice here. Uh, I could, if I wanted, uh, actually save that off to a variable. So I could say like sides equals three. And I could actually use that variable sides in both of those places. And so you can see that I can do that with the triangle. And if I wanted to go back and change it for the square, I could, but I'm gonna not bother just to kind of show you uh, that there's two ways to do things. So now if I were to say three, uh, it would use my new and improved code, which says sides equals three. And so then it just quickly goes through and it figures out how to do the math. Pretty sweet, huh? And again, you can do this in, uh, in any color you wanted. Another thing that you can do, this is completely optional, 
is I like watching the turtle. He's, he's kind of fun to watch, but pretty soon it's going to be too slow. And so there is a way you can speed up the turtle if you want. Uh, and I'll just kind of show it to you now. And so in the same way that you set his pen, like right up front here, you could actually set his speed as well. So if I were to say turtle.speed, uh, let's make him really fast. Let's make him 20 fast. Um, and so now if I run this program again, and I say three, which is for draw a roof, before it took him a while, uh, but now you can see he's just gonna do it uh, super fast. And I went ahead and added that now, just in case your, um, in case your code is running slow uh, and you uh, want it to go faster. If you don't mind the speed, by all means, you can leave the default uh, and that'd be fine. But speed 20 is gonna help make him faster. All right, the next things that we want to do is we want to draw a uh, door. Uh, right here, we're going to put a big door, then a window, and then a doorknob. Uh, so let's just go ahead and add some of these additional features. Uh, so I'm going to say if the selection is four, then I want to draw the door using the turtle. Cool. And so I'm going to come down here and I'm going to copy, what the heck, I'll copy my draw roof. And paste it right here. And I'm going to call it draw uh, door this time. Now the door starts in a specific spot. The door is going to start at negative 25. Um, and then negative 160 is where he's going to start at. 160. Uh, and the door is actually just a little bit harder. So the door is not a regular polygon, right? And so if we were to change the sides to four uh, and we were to set the length to, I think it's 50 on the shorter side, uh, and we were to run that, then our door, um, I'm going to go ahead and draw the other things just so you can kind of see everything we've drawn so far. So number four, the door here would be uh, a little a little square door, right? Um, and so the problem is is that uh, we're drawing a rectangle or a square when we want to be drawing a rectangle. So you can see here that we want the door to be a rectangle. So our neat little trick before that we did for these polygons isn't going to work for this one because it's a more complex shape. So I'm actually going to uh, get rid of this variable sides. Um, and I've got two options. I could do draw, turn, draw, turn. And then I could just do it again, draw, turn, draw, turn. It does turn out though that this L part, this lower L, and then this upper L, it is actually the same. So I'm gonna be sneaky. Uh, I'm gonna actually do a loop of two, but then inside the loop of two, uh, and here, uh, I don't know, I guess I could do 360 divided by 4, but I'm just going to say it's 90. Um, what I could do here is instead of always going 50, I could do two loops, and then inside the two loops I do two things. So you can see how 4 times 1 is the same as 2 times 2. Uh, so this would actually do the same thing. But the nice thing here is I can make the second one I do longer. So I've got a short side, a turn a long side, a turn. And then since I'm repeating that twice, uh, I'm gonna do short side turn, long side turn, and I'm gonna see if it all uh, comes together. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw all these other things just so I've kind of got the uh, reference. I'm gonna switch my color to red, and then I'm gonna do my new thing, which is the door number four, um, and I can see that it drew a uh, door on there. So there's two objects that are left. Uh, there is the uh, octagon, uh, which is a regular uh, polygon, and then there's also the circle uh, for the doorknob. Now I'm going to tell you that actually both of these are regular polygons. Uh, the square was a four-sided polygon, the triangle was a three-sided. Obviously the octagon is an eight-sided uh, polygon, and then the circle is not really a circle at all. The circle is actually um, a 36-sided polygon uh, that is so uh, small and fine like a circle that you can't even tell that it's 36 sides. 
And so what I want you to do is I am going to cut off this video lecture here um, and I'm going to, oops, here's the solution if you get really stuck. Uh, I'm going to encourage you to figure it out. Um, and so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to experiment, right? So you're going to have to start, I would probably copy uh, the, the roof one, right? So I would copy the roof one. I would make a draw window. And you're going to have to experiment with how big the window is. You're going to have to experiment with where it starts. Um, and you're going to have to just kind of play some to figure out how to get it in the right spot. I could tell you the numbers, uh, but I think that what I'd really like to do most is have you do it uh, all by yourself. Uh, so I'm going to show you the, the solution that I used in the, in the code here in the video. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to try it yourself, but if you do in fact get stuck, uh, here are uh, some of my solutions. So I've got uh, different numbers in this solution, uh, but you can see that here's my draw window code. Uh, so you can see the point that I started at and the length I did. And then here's my uh, door knock code. Uh, and so those functions uh, are the new ones that we're going to be uh, letting you try to write uh, all by yourself. And then, of course, once you get those added, uh, you also have to um, make the numbers. So you're going to have to make a five and a six uh, that are going to be for your drawing window and drawing, uh, what did I call it, knob or door door knob. Cool, so you're gonna to have to make those functions on your own, uh, but I thought I'd just go ahead and show the solution here. Uh, and so now if I wanted to, I could make a chimney, a house, a roof, a door, uh, a window, uh, once you actually get the window uh, figured out. I'm not sure why that messed up my uh, drawing canvas, but that's okay. Uh, and then a doorknob. And the doorknob is a little bit slower um, and, you know, you can change the color of these things uh, to highlight your new items, uh, which is the window uh, and the doorknob. So a very, very, very thorough crash course uh, into Python. And uh, there's a ton of, like, more introductory things that we could say. Uh, but what I really wanted to do is I just wanted to dive in and do some stuff. Um, and then as we uh, eventually will get better at, at seeing what, what we do together, we'll get better at drawing our own things. So for example, you probably could, if you wanted, try to add drawing a yard, right? Or drawing a mailbox. Um, and you've kind of seen how the pattern works uh, to where you can try to do your own things. All right, so that's uh, it for our, our first um, Python crash course. Uh, we're learning about the environment, uh, the flow control, uh, the geometry, uh, all sorts of crazy things. And I'm sure that some of you uh, did it in Replit just like me, uh, but know that you could also uh, do it in this program PyCharm uh, if you wanted to do it uh, over here. And it also has the ability uh, to write all the code. And the nice thing about PyCharm is you can actually run it as fast as you want. So here it's, it's running fairly slow because I picked to go fairly slow, uh, but it can crank, uh, crank these things out. All right, hopefully uh, you enjoyed seeing some Python code. Uh, as we do more and more, you'll get better at writing independent uh, your own Python code. Uh, but if for now you can pattern match what we're doing, uh, that would be awesome. All right, see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.